Welcome to Daniel Weekly number 18. Still um, uh, suffering from a little from a cold here, as you may hear, my voice is not as uh, usual. But um, I think I'll survive. Um, let's do a quick one. Uh, I'm, um, I was away yesterday, I was in Berlin actually on a Mozilla thing. Um, curl things. I wanted to mention that I, um, I forgot to mention this last week that I wanted to do that um, uh, uh, for Windows people, um, Microsoft did uh, this PowerShell thing, which is, an, uh, I think it is more a fancy command prompt, more like a shell scripting thing uh, that allows you to, that um, it allows you to uh, script and do, do better command line things on, on Windows than you did, could before. And anyway, they added aliases for curl and wget actually. That instead of using the real tools, then uh, do their own magic, then the PowerShell stuff. Kind of dirty. And uh, someone uh, actually submitted a bug report to Microsoft about it. And I saw it uh, last week or whenever it was. I thought it was fun. I think the, since, I mean, the aliases, they actually kind of shadow the actual command. So if you install kernel wget uh, on, the, on your, your machine, uh, they, it won't run the actual commands since it has aliases that run run before the actual commands. <clears throat> Other than that, we did. Uh, Alessandro uh, managed to get the uh, OpenSSL version of the OCSP stapling done. So now we have OCSP stapling done for all those three major TLS backends: uh, OpenSSL, NSS, and GNU TLS, and um, <clears throat> that is good. And uh, someone also uh, sent a patch to make uh, curl build with boring SSL properly, which uh, it didn't. I mean, it didn't before, and when his patch actually didn't fix it either completely. S but but uh, he kind of triggered me to uh, proceed and, and, and polish it, that up and make sure that we actually can build with uh, boring SSL now. Um, Boring SSL, as you remember and well know, is uh, Google's fork of the OpenSSL project. So it's OpenSSL-like. Yeah, and there's this uh, LibreSSL, which is also another uh, OpenSSL fork. But, and, and since there are two forks, and, and the original project has also kind of taken off much better now, since after Heartbeat and everything, uh, um, we have an interesting situation and we can compare those three ones against each other. And in the boring SSL case, Dan says, uh, it, this was kind of made it current. Uh, boring SSL is kind of taking its own detour. So they um, differ quite a lot now, API wise. They remove things, they change things. So, so they do desk differently. They removed the, like MD4 that we need for NTLM and they, uh, they don't have the random uh, seeding stuff, and they don't have the OCS, S, OCSP uh, stapling uh, API uh, the same way that um, uh, OpenSSL and LibreSSL do it. Um, there was some other things too. So anyway, if you build curl now with boring SSL, we have to switch off uh, and TLM, uh, and we did uh, some other uh, uh, if def uh, crazy stuff to make sure it builds but it does that's cool uh, i also have an automated build now uh, running daily to build and test curl with boring ssl just to make sure things keep working <clears throat> i, I also wanted to mention that um we now have at least two download mirrors running HTTP2 if you want to download curl over HTTP2. Unfortunately, we don't have the curl main site yet over HTTP2. We don't even have HTTPS yet, so <clears throat> it'll come at some point. Please don't email me privately about stuff in my open source projects. That is kind of a not so nice way to try to cut the line. I may not be as fast as I want to be to respond on some of the emails, especially on the curl mailing list like the last couple of weeks that are piling up, but uh, emailing me privately will only just make everything worse for me. <clears throat> Fostem this weekend, I'm flying down Friday, I will be talking Sunday. Uh, I'll meet a lot of friends, I'm sure we'll have a lot of, 
a, a good time and um, hopefully a lot of good Belgian beers. And uh, I will speak uh, in the in the Mozilla room and in the embedded room. And speaking then of Mozilla, I um, have been working somewhat with the Firefox OS version of my network changes stuff. And and it seems that the, uh, I want uh, we've been trying to backport my stuff since I've been working on the Bleeding Edge um, branch. Well, head basically Firefox thirty eight. And they want it into the more current um, Firefox OS 2.1, I believe they call it. And it's based on a much older... Uh... Oops, got a little bit of a um, cut off there. Uh, never mind, uh, skip that. Uh, move on. HTTP, HTTP2 then. Um, uh, Martin Thompson posted just... Um, uh, a few hours ago that he will post um, another draft version of H the HTTP2 spec uh, within 24 or 48 hours or so, which is interesting. It's going well, I think, after the last call uh, within the ITF. So there won't be any major changes, just a lot of clarifications and, and nits addressed, basically, after all the questions from the last call. A lot of new readers have kind of asked about details and you know, asked for clarifications. Uh, my document HTTP, HTTP2 explained has been, um, uh, the, the Russian uh, translation has been updated and should be up to snuff now. Um, there uh, is an interesting stat that if you check um, the HTTP, HTTP versions in um, fi that Firefox 35 uh, records, if you're participating in the um, telemetry um, data gathering that uh, Mozilla does for those who volunteer to get included there. Uh, now with more than 100 million responses counted, HTTP2 is 9% of all HTTP responses. Actually, uh, more than nine times more common than HTTP 1.0, which I think is interesting. I'm also getting um, updated data from uh, Google about uh, HTTP2 usage that I want to include in my talk on Sunday in fa at first time. Uh, Firefox 35 has uh, HTTP2 enabled by default. Chrome 40 that was released um, a couple of days ago, it apparently has it enabled by default for a, a small percentage of users and they um, plan to grow that amount of um, uh, users over time as things kind of if it works they'll um, enable it for more, more users um, apparently if you don't enable it yourself before that <clears throat> um, I've been working a bit with um, uh, Alex Lagot Alexis Lagot about, uh, with uh, in the five uh, uh, in the Wireshark team about doing uh, when doing dissecting with HTTP2 since it's not always obvious exactly how you are supposed to do that and, and get good uh, HTTP, HTTP2 protocol analysis after a, a run with it. But um, um, it's looking good. It was, it's mostly a way uh, you, you need to enable HTTP2 and preferably you need to disable Speedy to make uh, Wireshark um, act uh, the best way and apparently you can only disable speedy if you're running on linux at least you can only disable speedy if you run the gtk version and not the qt version and if you build wireshark from git uh, wireshark qt is the default version and you have to kind of uh, explicitly uh, run the gtk version instead if you want to disable speedy and you need to do that to, to make it do good uh, http2 dissecting Oh well, um, fun, fun. Uh, maybe someone will write th that down at some point. Um, that's it for this week. Uh, next week should be Monday. Um, I might have something to say about Fostem or I might be just too tired to do anything. We will just have to find out. Um, if you have anything, just uh, let me know. If um, Otherwise, just be quiet and watch this video a couple more times. Maybe it'll be more interesting uh, or not. See you next week.
Bye.